So Jordan Peterson, as you all know, is now with the Daily Wire, and uh, that's Ben Shapiro's outlet, right-wing media outlet. And um, you've seen in real time, over time, he's shifted further and further and further to the right. Um, well, now he's reached his final form, I guess you can say. So here's Michael Tracy, and he tweets the following. Jordan Peterson calls on the West to get their act together and overthrow the Iranian government in the name of opposing misogyny. Apparently, Jordan Peterson is one of those guys who should just stay embroiled in pronoun controversies 24-7. So, shots fired here from Michael Tracy <laughs> at Jordan Peterson. Um, now, I must admit, when I read Michael Tracy's summary of it, I was like, seems like he's overstating what Peterson said. Well, let's listen. You guys make up your own mind, but I don't think he's actually overstating it. Listen. If any of you have been particularly taken by this story today, you know, you could always put pen to paper and write your congressman or your senator or, and let them know that you're not all that happy about the situation in Iran and that if uh, the politicians got their act together and were stalwart in their opposition to this fundamentalist, totalitarian, mis misogynistic, brutal regime, that maybe it could be pushed over and that would be a nice object lesson to totalitarian tyrants everywhere in the world. So to say, write to your congressman, and maybe this regime can get pushed over, why would a U.S. congressperson, or I don't know if he's talking, I mean, maybe in Canada, I don't, I don't know, why would the government of the U.S. or the government of Canada, why would they be the one you write to say, hey, you got to do something about Iran, unless what you're saying is, we need to be involved in some sort of regime change effort in Iran. Now, look, I'm... I'm no defender of the government of Iran. Michael Tracy's no defender of the government of Iran. They are uh, a Shia fundamentalist government. Um, they are struggling colossally uh, economically. They're under crippling sanctions and have been for a very long time. Um, it, it, they're, they're an issue, right? But they are their own issue. Now, we had something called the Iranian Nuclear Agreement, which was put into place under Obama and Kerry. And regardless of what you think of Obama or Kerry... It was probably the best thing they did in that empirically it worked. So under that deal, Iran got their own money back, which we had stolen from them, and they allow in the International Atomic Energy Agency, the IAEA, to regulate their nuclear facilities. Now, under international law, they're allowed to have uh, nuclear capabilities for power for their power grid and for research, and they did have it. But the IAEA goes in there to make sure they're not enriching to the point where they can get a nuclear weapon. Now, over 10 times the IAEA went in there and regulated and came out and said, they're following the agreement to a T. Trump comes in there, rips up the agreement, and, and throws it out. And then Iran goes, well, um, if, if you guys are going to start sanctioning us again, that means you are violating the deal, so I guess in turn we're going to have to violate the deal back, and maybe we do start making nuclear weapons, right? And so the hawkishness, the neocon approach, the no diplomacy, no negotiation, no deal approach is what gets us to the point where tensions are rising and where it looks like we're on the brink of some sort of a hot war. That was all avoidable. Every step of the way, it was avoidable. And so for him to say, oh, we care about the women and girls. Well, Jordan, let me explain something to you very clearly. We are very close allies with Saudi Arabia. They treat women just as bad. And actually, that's not even fair. Worse. Saudi Arabia treats women worse than the Iranian government does. Now, who do we have more sway over? Our friends or our enemies? So if you actually wanted to, you know help women and end misogyny abroad, you would start first and foremost with your allies who treat women terribly, and you'd talk to them and say, hey man, maybe we condition some aid to you, maybe we cut off some of the money we're giving you or some of the weapons we're giving you, unless you start treating women better. That would be the first step if you were concerned about we have to fight misogyny around the world. You go to your allies first, not your enemies, because you have no say over your enemies. Unless what you're saying is, let's do a war, let's do some sort of CIA regime change. Now, we already did that in the past, Jordan. We already did that. In the 1950s, we overthrew Mohammad Mossadegh, who was democratically elected in Iran, and we put into place the Shah, who was a dictator. Now look, under the Shah, women were treated better, but he was also a dictator. So there may have been more social freedoms, but also the United States and the UK were effectively stealing Iranian oil at the same time, because the Shah was a puppet to the West. So because of that guy's rule, that led directly to the 1979 Islamic Revolution. So if you learn the history of this stuff, you learn very quickly, regime change is not the way to go. Doing war or doing some sort of CIA covert operation to meddle in another country's affairs, that's not the way to go. We don't even have the right to do that. Never mind the whole conversation about did it work, did it not work? Well, it didn't work, but even if it did work, that's not our place because we are not the world police. We don't have, uh, you know, our act together, you know? So 
I do think this comment from Peterson is crazy. And this is like Daily Wire 101 stuff. Let me explain to you why war is good and we are the moral authority. And it's a joke. Yeah, the con- our country, the one that uh, did Guantanamo Bay and torture, the one that did illegal wars in Iraq and Afghanistan and our drone war. Yeah, we have the moral authority to say, you're not treating women properly, so we need to go after you. So, um, Michael Tracy said, I already read you what Michael Tracy said. So Jordan Peterson sees this, can't help himself. This guy's a Twitter warrior. And he says, I read this a couple of times and failed to understand your point, Michael Tracy. Is this a pro-Iranian theocracy comment? Oh my God. Or is it somehow about what I hypothetically think about women? Care to clarify? See, now this annoys me. This annoys me. This annoys me because it's the age-old trick. If you criticize the war in Iraq or invading Iraq and trying to topple Saddam Hussein, they go, are you doing a pro-Saddam Hussein thing? And it's like, no, you can acknowledge he's a bad guy. You can acknowledge he has a shitty government. You can acknowledge he's a dictator without wanting to go to war. So this is, is this a pro-Iranian theocracy comment? Yeah, that's what, if Michael Tracy was uh, president, he would want to implement an Iranian-style theocracy. Like, it's just, it's so flippant, it's so glib. So then Michael Tracy responds and says, Sure, happy to clarify. You're calling for U.S. intervention to topple a foreign government, also known as regime change, which is probably the most reliably insane thing the U.S. government ever does. And you frame it as some sort of great moral crusade to impose gender equity. I mean, he's right. First of all, the idea we would ever put those sorts of concerns, like human rights concerns, at the forefront of our foreign policy is beyond laughable. Jordan, we are aiding Saudi Arabia right now as they do a genocide in Yemen, as they bomb mosques and hospitals and schools and open-air markets, as Saudi Arabia starves the country of Yemen and people are in famine. The idea where it's like, we need to put human rights concerns first. If you did, you would be on the other side of the fight with Saudi Arabia and Yemen. You'd be backing Yemen and cracking down on Saudi Arabia to get them to let up and stop doing a genocide. We're currently occupying one third of Syria and stealing their oil. What does any of this have to do with human rights concerns? So let's see. I'm not sure. Is there more of a response? And Michael Tracy also says, if you really think it's a pro-Iranian theocracy comment to observe the insanity of agitating to depose the government of Iran or to spread liberal values across the Middle East, this may suggest you've strayed a bit far from your usual areas of expertise, Jordan Peterson. Okay. Look, I think that's fair, right? I do. Jordan Peterson was a clinical psychologist, originally like a self-help guy, and he helped a lot of people, right? I'm not going to deny that. He wrote a bunch of books. People liked him. Uh, you know, there's a lot of people who were kind of lost and didn't have direction or meaning in their life, and they looked to Jordan Peterson, and he gave them something, and he gave them strategies to cope and a way to live your life, which can, you know, you get your act together, you clean your room, you do, and, you know, hey, that's all fine and dandy. But then the more and more he's gotten involved in politics, the more it's like, what are you talking about? And when he's talking foreign policy, man, he is in way over his depth. And, you know, Michael Tracy, this is like his main issue, is foreign policy, and he's just running circles around Peterson here. Pfft. Imagine of all the things going on in the world right now, Peterson is like, man, we really should write to our Congress people to tell them you've got to do something about the Iranian theocracy. Unbelievable, man. Unbelievable. So there we have it. That's the show. <laughs> I am done, y'all. I love y'all very much. Remember, there is, we are doing a live stream right here on this channel, live stream of the um, State of the Union address. We'll be there before, we'll be there after, it'll be a whole bunch of fun, we'll break it down for you guys. What does Biden get right? What does he get wrong? What do we think of his arguments? Um, What do we think of how he's presenting the state of the country? So definitely uh, check in for that. I'm looking forward to doing that. It's going to be a hell of a lot of fun. Um, And subscribe to the channel. If you're new to the channel, subscribe to the channel. Or if you're not new to the channel, but you still haven't subscribed, subscribe. Get us over that million subscriber mark. I really appreciate it. Man, I want that plaque, dog. I want that plaque more than anything. Um, Also, you can now listen to our show on Spotify. We have the full show every day on Spotify, so go check it out over there, especially because YouTube has been a little (laughs) lately with how they they treat us, so trying to get people to look on other platforms, and that's, you know, one way to do it. And then massive shout-out to everybody who supports the show on Patreon. Massive shout-out to everybody who uh, supports Crystal Kyle and Friends on Substack. I love you all very much, and I will talk to you tomorrow.
Ever since Adpocalypse, when YouTube defunded all independent news and politics overnight, we haven't trusted them. We know they can pull the rug out from underneath us at any time. If you enjoy this content, please consider tipping a dollar or two per month on the Secular Talk Patreon. Link in the video description box below. Thanks for your support.